greatest joy in my life is when I decided to follow God and join Him in the missionary work. It's like a wave, you know, rising. And we cannot create the wave, only God can, can make the wave. And, and we need to ride that wave of uh, revival and uh, pursuit of uh, the calling of the Philippine Church. Young people, to find purpose in life is for you to be used as an instrument of God in reaching the loss for Jesus Christ. To the present day, about 4 billion people need to hear the love of God and the gospel. There is a tremendous need, and the biggest bulk of the unreached people groups in the world are in Asia. We have a, a tremendous role and responsibility to play in the completion of the Great Commission. This is now the time the Filipinos has to rise up and really fulfill her calling to be a blessing to Asia and especially in the Middle East. We have responsibility to bring the gospel to them, uh, to, uh, to share the light of the gospel to these countries. So the calling of the Philippines is to be really a missionary sending nation. I'm a civil engineer by profession, but I decided after, you know, seeking the Lord's direction to quit as an engineer and, and work full-time uh, in the ministry. So we did our outreach actually in Spain right uh, during the Olympics. That actually started it all, you know, the, the passion to, to be involved in cross-cultural missions. I can say that there is no greater joy than to be doing what God has called you to do, especially contributing something for the completion of the Great Commission. When you really, when you've seen the cross and how Jesus really emptied himself and really became one of us, you really would want to embrace the missional lifestyle. And missions is following the footsteps of Jesus Christ because he himself was a missionary. He emptied himself, ran after us, and brought us back into the arms of the Father. I believe once Young people are properly informed, properly encouraged, and properly inspired will be a great factor for them to decide to go to mission work. When I went first overseas into a, a close country, I realized that they don't have the same freedom and they really need Jesus. So they need Christians to go there and preach the gospel to them. And for Filipinos, because we are so blessed, and we've been blessed for many, many years, I think it's really time for us to go and share the same. My name is Rosalie. Um, I'm from the down south, which is Davao City. I remember when I was a little girl, I was reached out by a bunch of YWAMers in the down south. And um, I remember I was part of the children's ministry. And at that very young age, I remember I was also um, signing up what is your ambition and I often write, I want to be a missionary. I, I came in with that belief that I could not make it. So the challenge really is my fi the finances. If I as a Filipino coming from a ghetto background has experienced God's provision, has experienced God's faithfulness where finances is concerned. I believe also that Filipinos, other Filipinos, they can experience it as well. I had an issue with unbelief before, a big issue. Like I remember I always call on Jesus, but I never believe that He can. He can provide or He can take care of me. Not until I really met Jesus in that area. And that's when I got, you know, the, the breakthrough of going into the nations. As a Filipino, God wants to see us going out there. In the 1040 window, in our region, we are the only Christian nation. If we would look at Indochina region, we are the only Christian nation. And we have what it takes to reach out our own neighboring country. We have a tremendous burden in our heart to send young people, to send missionaries in the 1040 window in Asia and wherever the gospel is needed. My family, it was so hard for them. For them, you know, we send you to school. You should be able to work and get, get a job so that you would get the pay. So it's really hard for them to understand. That was also my prayer to the Lord. I said, God, you know, I know you're my father. You will provide for me. 
uh, I really want to prove to my family that you called me. It took a few years, especially for my dad. But then after that, he realized that, wow, God is really providing for my daughter, even if I didn't send her money. You know, they realized that, oh, yeah, I think you are really in the right place. I was very sure I heard from the Lord very clearly, and I just obeyed, and I've really seen God provide it. I never thought in my whole life that I could be going international. Me, the person who doesn't have any support at all, doesn't have any money, doesn't have anything at all. Just before the day we go to outreach, I cannot pay. I don't have anything at all, and I just have to cry to God. Boom, suddenly, the day before, somebody have paid for everything. It's such an adventure because you just see how God provides, how God moves, how God changes things. And there's nothing that could really replace that adventure and really seeing it with your own eyes that God is really all powerful and really just seeing His hand move. The local churches are a great factor for these young people to, to go for a world mission, including cross-cultural mission. We need to reignite the missionary passion that the church can deliver to the young people. So one of my directions is to really expose the young people to the mission field because these young people will be used to share the gospel outside Philippines. So right now we're preparing our young people, we're exposing them to mission, uh, not only to just share the gospel, but um, we need, they need to see the real world, what is really Christianity. It's not just Bible study, attending church and during Sundays, but it's actually reaching out people, reaching out nations. The beginning of missions is really prayer, and it requires uh, to hear what the Lord is saying. And what the Lord is saying now is this is the time to engage in cross-cultural missions. We were a team that went to the island, and They've never seen foreigners. I think we were the first one. And very simple, we have a medicine kit. That was what we have. It just made a difference for them. Just the fact that we were there and we were treating their wounds and treating their lives. After that, we were able, God just opened doors. We were able to pray for people. We were able to clean their houses. We were able to share stories. We were able to worship. We were able to pray. We were able to pray for people. A lot of the Japanese I've talked to on my short-term trips would always tell me, you're so happy. I really like that happiness you have. And then there was this one trip I'll never forget. When they asked me why I love Jesus so much, I just made a simple gesture and said, my, it, He makes my heart glad. And I, I smiled and then they all started clapping. And then the missionary afterwards told me, you know, you, you really live out what you say. And they really want that. I just discovered that me being in the Filipinos, a lot different from you know their, uh, the culture, the tradition, the food was a lot different, and I had to learn cross culturally. You know, I had to learn to adapt to them. I had to learn to understand them that they are unique, and God loves them. I just needed to see them as how God sees them. God wants us to just take a risk and really have the obedience, the heart that is that would obey the Lord in every step of the way really follow whatever the, the desire or whatever the call that God has placed in your heart even though you feel like you cannot make it or you don't have what it takes. The Lord Jesus said, do not fear. I am with you always, even into the end of the world. And the promises of God is for people to understand why they should not be hindered in doing cross-cultural mission work. Life is always going to be challenging. Whether you're in mission or not, it will always be challenging. It won't stop. You know, it just have to be your choice. Whether you step out if you really want it, uh, you really know that God spoke to you about mission, do it. And missions, is, it's really living outside your comfort zone. It's not an invitation to a comfortable life. And when you really see how, how beautiful He is and how wonderfully He works, you would really say, oh, I don't care about these comforts. I, I just love Jesus and He's so amazing. And, when you really see that and you really embrace that, you would really want to follow Him and really go on missions with Him. All your ambitions and dreams in life, you thought it will be God. No, there's greater things that God has in store for you. 
if God has called you, then you must go. Otherwise, you, you will miss the blessing and the joy of, of serving the Lord, especially seeing lives transformed uh, by the power of the gospel. Young people have the great potential, have the great responsibilities to do something great for God. Only what's done for Jesus Christ will truly last. Do something that will truly last. And one that will truly last is to reach someone for Jesus Christ.